Are you signed up for your first high rocks race, but you're just not sure how to prepare? Well, in today's no BS video, I'm gonna cover 20 of my best tips to get you fully ready for your first race, but also set you up for an amazing finishing time. So if you're ready to smash your first high rocks, smash that like button and let's jump into tip number one. Tip number one is to start building your engine. What does this mean? Well, it means you gotta start running. If you're not currently doing some running, you're gonna have to get after it because running is about 60% of the high rocks race. So I'm not telling you to go out there and set new PRs on your one mile time or anything like that. The biggest tip I can give you is to start running in zone two. This is gonna be slow, kind of boring, but really easy runs to start building your aerobic engine so you can be prepared for the time on your feet when you're at High Rocks, which could potentially be an hour and a half, maybe even more than that out there on the course. So start running, start incorporating one to maybe even three long, slow and easy runs per week. Don't go too crazy, don't go hurt yourself, but start implementing running right away. Tip number two is don't neglect strength training. We are gonna need to have some serious strength when we're out there on the course. We have movements like lunges, we have the row machine, we have sled push, sled pull and wall balls all of which are gonna tax your strength system. So we need to be making sure our muscles get just as much work as our running is gonna get. So incorporate at least three to four days of targeted strength training, doing things that are going to be applicable to your race, like overhead press, deadlifts, lunges, even things like squats, front squats, to make sure your core is strong. At the end of the day, strength training is gonna be a vital component of your high rocks preparation. So make sure you don't neglect it, keep it as part of your training regimen. All right, tip number three is we wanna lose unnecessary weight. In this case, any extra body fat that you're carrying that's just gonna slow you down out there on the course. If you're a bigger guy like me, this might mean slimming down by five to 10 pounds. Now, if you're someone who is really overweight, who's like, man, I need a challenge, but I just don't know if I'm ready for high rocks. I totally understand. Inside of our VIP transformation program, we actually work with plenty of people, hundreds of people over the age of 40 who have a busy career, a demanding schedule, who want to transform how they look and feel permanently. Once they do, they jump into something like a high rocks because they're like, I need another challenge. I need something to keep me driven and motivated and moving forward. So maybe you fit into bucket number one where you're like, hey, I'm a guy, super successful, just don't look the way I wanna look. Have a crazy schedule, don't have a ton of time, need something to point me in the right direction. Well, you can learn all about my actual program inside the description of this video or at the first comment if you wanna schedule a conversation. We can get you set up for success and maybe High Rocks is in your near future. Or maybe you're just like, hey, I'm on the cutting edge here of being in great shape. My suggestion, just cut the unnecessary weight. You don't wanna have your body fighting to provide oxygen for tissue that you just don't need. So lean down a little bit, be in race shape as you head into your high rocks. And in that same breath, I highly suggest tip number four, which is get accountability partners. We provide this in our program. Of course, we have hundreds of accountability partners inside of our community. But if you're just jumping into a high rocks race, I say grab a friend or two, maybe even decide to do a doubles race where you have someone do it with you. Having accountability is gonna keep your head in the game. It's so easy to get discouraged, especially as you're training for a race like this that you haven't done before. There's a lot that goes into it. That's why I'm making this video. But you know, if it's just me as your accountability partner, that's fine, subscribe to the channel, let's get you dialed in. But ultimately, it's really important to have people out there who are doing it with you, or at least they're on the sideline supporting you through it. So find a community, get locked in, get that accountability that you need. Tip number five is to get comfortable with all stations as we head into the race. Now we're grouping these tips in order. This is all pre-race work. We're gonna talk about the race itself here shortly. So don't click away because we're gonna get into the good stuff here momentarily. But it's important to understand each and every station of High Rocks. There's eight stations and most of them you probably don't currently do in your day-to-day -day training. Wall balls, farmer's carry, skier. You may not have even done a skier before. 
So you wanna spend time getting comfortable, especially as you start incorporating these things into your day-to-day -day training. If you go into the high rocks having never done these stations before, you're gonna be in for a rude awakening. So go out there, find a gym that has sleds, find a gym that has a ski erg, start getting comfy with these different stations and get acclimated to them as soon as possible. Which leads me to tip number six, which is watch film. Film study. You might be like, what are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about YouTube. There's a ton of videos, including the ones I make, that will show you how to actually do the high rocks. It'll show you live footage of people doing the high rocks, whether it's a world championship event where you have crazy stud athletes out there crushing high rocks, or just day-to-day -day people like myself who just wanna go out there and challenge themselves. You can go study film and see what form they're using. What does the race look like? What does it kind of feel like, right? So go study film. That's tip number six. So you get visually acclimated to what the race is gonna look like. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's talk about tip number seven, which is race week fuel. Well, as you lead into the race, you don't wanna wait till the last minute to start fueling your body properly. You should, throughout your training, be eating according to your nutritional needs. In this case, we're talking about performance, so I highly suggest eating close to maintenance calories. If you're trying to shed some weight, you might be in a slight calorie deficit, which is totally fine for the majority of your training, as long as you're eating enough nutrients in the form of carbs, fats, and protein to recover and fuel your workouts properly. But by the time race week rolls around, the work should be done. You don't wanna be trying to shred, you know, three or four pounds race week. You wanna be starting to carb up and making sure your body has plenty of storage of carbohydrates so that you're ready to go on race day. My suggestion is to slowly increase calories throughout the race week. Don't need to do any crazy jump ups in food, but maybe adding 5%, 10% to your day in the form of carbohydrates, starting around Tuesday or Wednesday before a Saturday race is a really good idea. So that way, not only do you get a sense of how you're gonna feel well ahead of the event, but you are topping off your energy storage because there's still gonna be some workouts you do during race week. So you're gonna be burning through calories. You're gonna be peaking for your race. You don't wanna wait until Friday night, you know, when you have a Saturday morning race to start carving up. It's too late at that point. You wanna start at least Wednesday. So that way heading into the weekend, you have all the fuel that you need. This also goes hand in hand with tip number eight, which is hydration. So you wanna be drinking plenty of water throughout your training, but especially race week. My suggestion, it's a very, very uh, basic suggestion, but I would say about a gallon, maybe a gallon and a half of water per day, along with electrolytes. So sodium, potassium, and magnesium, getting a couple servings of those throughout the day. You can use packets, things like Element, or uh, rehydrate, or even things like liquid IV, all of which can provide the nutrients in the form of minerals and sodium and, and uh, electrolytes that you're gonna need that will get flushed out as you start sweating throughout the week and on race day, right? So you don't wanna go into your Hyrax event low on these minerals and these electrolytes. You wanna make sure you're topped off as well to avoid things like cramping and to make sure you perform like an absolute beast on race day. Performance is often dictated by your hydration and your electrolyte levels. So make sure you're paying attention to those. Stay on top of that just as much as your nutrition. Tip number nine is race week sleep. So the night before a race, it's very common to not be able to sleep very well. You're excited, you're nervous, you have anxiety. You're like, what did I sign up for? I can't believe I'm doing this. So it's very common to not sleep great the night before. So don't stress. I'm not gonna tell you to do anything crazy the night before. If you don't get much sleep, oh well. Do your best to get as much sleep as you can. But if you don't sleep great, that's totally normal. My suggestion is to create a sleep bank, meaning start sleeping better the week of the race. So get a little bit extra sleep on Wednesday, on Thursday, and on Friday. But then Friday night when you go to bed and you just can't fall asleep because you're anxious and you get up way too early and you're just like, what am I doing? I got four hours of sleep. Don't worry, you bank some sleep earlier in the week so your body is ready and able to perform. So get better sleep the week of, not necessarily the night before the race. Practice race timing is tip number 10. What does this mean? Well, we don't really get our race time with high rocks until the week of. Sometimes I get it on Wednesday. 
Sometimes it's not till Thursday. Sometimes I don't even see my race time till Friday. And this is just part of the game. They have a busy schedule. They're trying to put everybody in their proper place. So sometimes you'll be racing early in the day. Sometimes you'll be racing mid morning. Sometimes you'll be racing middle of the day. It just depends on what you signed up for. If you're doing a doubles event, a, a relay, a solo event, a pro event, there's so many different time slots. So my suggestion is as you set up your training, you have some race day practice, right? So you do a, a, a simulated race that's done in the morning, first thing in the day. So you wake up, take your pre-race fuel early, you go do a high rock sim and you knock it out. And then you try doing it middle of the day. You know, it doesn't have to be a full high rocks. It just could be a tough workout. Then you do it later in the day. So you're just mentally prepared for like whatever time you get. So if you're like, oh man, I've been training to get ready and do my race first thing in the morning. And then they say, oh, guess what? You're racing at 5 p.m. You're like, huh, no idea how to prep for that. Well, you've practiced, so you're ready. You know how it feels, you know what you gotta do. Maybe it's a nap, maybe it's proper fuel timing. Whatever it is, you've practiced it. So make sure you prepare for all potential scenarios. Okay, let's talk about race day. Tip number 11, race day fuel. This is so important. So the night before, we wanna get a good meal in that includes a significant amount of carbohydrates. How much? Depends on the person. Um, we wanna have practiced this throughout our training, but a good idea is to have at least about 100 grams of carbs the night before. Once again, this is a very general uh, suggestion, so anybody in the comments, don't kill me. I'm just trying to help you guys get started on your first one. But something like a good amount of rice, decent amount of maybe pasta if your body can handle it. Just nothing that will upset your stomach, obviously. So keep it basic, keep it simple, keep it bland. We're just trying to fuel ourselves. Maybe some fruit the night before. And then the morning of, we wanna eat something that's faster digesting, that's not gonna sit in our stomach. My go-to is a little bit of granola, some honey, and a banana with a little bit of Greek yogurt. For me, it just feels good. It doesn't sit in my stomach. I'm not eating it and going, man, it feels like there's a block in my stomach. You might need something even more fast digestion. You might need like a protein smoothie to go along with some fruit. Either way, we just wanna make sure we're getting a good amount of fast acting carbs. So in the form of fruit, honey, things are gonna be readily available to utilize in the race, usually a few hours after. I like to eat a meal about three to four hours before the actual race time. And then about an hour before the race, I'll take a little bit of a gel pack that's got about 30 to 40 grams of carbs just to top me off. But leading up to the race, I have about 300 grams of carbs between the night before and the morning of. And it's all typically pretty fast digesting stuff so that it's not sitting in my stomach. Of course, I'm drinking water, I'm doing electrolytes the morning of, I'm making sure I'm topping off all energy systems so that I'm ready to go. Leading into tip number 12, which is my warm up. So don't show up at the race, you know, 10 minutes before your race time. Get there at least an hour, hour and a half before your race time. Check in, relax, drink some more water, take an energy gel, get started. And by the way, this is a good time to tell you, don't take a lot of caffeine before your workout. This is a huge mistake, or before your race. Caffeine is going to ramp up your heart rate. You're not gonna need caffeine. Your adrenaline is gonna be your natural source of energy. If you want to maybe a cup of coffee to get things moving in the morning, that's fine. But just don't do like a crazy pre-workout that's got, you know, 300 to 400 milligrams of caffeine. That's going to jack up your heart rate and it's going to put you out of your zone too really, really quickly as you start to run. Your adrenaline is going to take over and you're going to get exhausted really quick. So I don't take really any caffeine before the race. Sometimes a little bit of coffee if I wake up kind of drowsy, but I try to keep my caffeine intake at 100 milligrams or below. Let my adrenaline take over. Ice water, if you wanna wake up in the morning, drink some ice water, dunk your head under some ice water, like that'll get you going really quick. And then just think about the race. And you're gonna be jacked up, listen to some good music, utilize your body's natural systems to get amped up. So the warm up. So we wanna spend at least 30 minutes warming up for the race. This starts with mobility work, moving through the lunge, stretching our legs out, getting our calves ready to go, swinging our arms, just getting ready for all the events. I like to do about five to 10 minutes of easy jogging, or if there's no jogging available on a treadmill or an area to run, I hop on the bike for five to 10 minutes. Then I'll just go through each station, just one by one. Do a little bit of ski erg, do a little bit of the sled push, a little bit of a pull, 
just to feel out the movements. I just want my body primed, right? It's like just getting it lubed up and oiled up, ready to go. It's a terrible analogy, but you get the point. So we're just trying to get primed mentally and physically for the task that is laying ahead of us. So you've done the work, relax, warm up for 30 minutes, get your heart rate up a little bit, then hit the starting line, you're ready to go. So let's talk about the rest of the race. Tip number 13 is start slow to finish fast. Pretty much 99% of people who start a high rocks are gonna fly out of the starting gate, right? They're sprinting around those first couple laps. They're excited, the crowds goes wild. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm actually here. And everybody around you is just flying. So you're trying to keep up, right? Now, if you're a pro in the game and you know high rocks, obviously you wouldn't be watching this video, but if you're someone who's maybe done other races and you're like, I kind of know my pacing and stuff, just be careful here, right? Because let me tell you, I've raced tons of high rocks at this point. I've raced against guys that fly out. I mean, I lose sight of them right away. And by the halfway through the race, I'm lapping them, right? Because they just spent their energy way too soon. Start slow. You can always pick up the pace. It's your first high rocks or one of your first high rocks probably. So Get used to the pacing, get used to the venue, look around, smile, have fun, knowing that you got a lot in the tank when you're gonna need it later in the race. And I promise you, if you start a little slower, if you leave some gas in the tank, you'll have plenty to come across that finish line full steam ahead. Tip number 14 is run the rock zones. So the rock zones are the areas where uh, all the stations are. So you're gonna run laps around the stations that are in the middle of this venue. You're gonna enter in through a gate and there's gonna be an area that really doesn't count towards your laps, but it's called the rock zone. And you're gonna have to get to whatever station you're going to next. And sometimes that can be a significant amount of distance. Do not walk, it's tempting. You're tired, you're like, oh, whew, I made it into the gate. All right, let me catch my breath and let me go to the station. And you walk to the station. You're cutting your time down significantly, right, by running. A lot of people are gonna be walking. You're gonna see people come in and just instantly start walking. Jog to your station. When you're done with your station, jog out of the rock zone. I promise this will make a huge difference in your finishing time. I've seen this be the difference between finishing, you know, a hundredth place and finishing top 20. For real, like this could be five to six minutes of time off your time. So run the rock zones, remember that. As soon as you enter that gate, don't stop running. You can maybe slow down if you're a little tired and you wanna catch your breath before a zone or if you've just finished a zone, you're like, oh my gosh, that was tough. Hit the jog and you can always pick up the run as you get into the actual laps. Tip number 15 is the first station, the ski erg. This is another one where I see guys just hammer it, right? And they think they're making up all this time, they're off to a, flat, a fast start, when in reality, they're maybe only getting ahead by like 10 to 20 seconds. I know it's crazy, but like when you look at the pacing times, you know, someone's hammering out a 150, you know, a minute 50 for every 500 meters. It's a thousand meters on the skier to start. So they do a minute 50, then a minute 50, and then someone who's doing two minutes, you know, they're only 10 seconds behind, so 20 seconds behind total, but it's so much easier, right? The pacing just feels so much easier. You're breathing normal, you're smiling through, it just doesn't feel that hard. And you come out of there just feeling awesome versus the guy who maybe did 150 is, oh my gosh, I'm spent, I need some water. And quickly that 20 seconds they had on you turns into being behind you by a minute, right? So the skier should feel easy. It's the first station, make it easy, make it smooth, come out of there feeling great, like you're just getting warmed up, that's vital. Now, the sled push is your next station. It's one of the harder stations for sure. You've practiced it, hopefully, if you took my advice in this video, but there's a technique that I'm gonna give you that, to me, just makes all the difference. So, the technique I'm gonna tell you is the breathing technique. So, you're gonna push the sled all the way down your first time, right? It's gonna suck. And when you get to the end, you're gonna take 10 quick and easy breaths in. One, 1,001, 1,002. You're gonna take 10 seconds of breathing, and then you're gonna push halfway, because there's four ups and downs, right? So you go up, down, up, down. That's your sled push in most of these venues. So you're gonna go all the way down, you're gonna take 10 seconds to breathe, you're gonna push halfway down, and you're gonna do another 10 seconds, right? Then you're gonna push halfway, you do 10 seconds. So instead of stopping and taking what people feel like is 10 seconds, but in reality, it's like a 30 second break, it's a 40 second break, you're taking a quick 10 seconds to catch your breath every half way down each lap, all right? So to recap, you're gonna do one full push, 
It's gonna feel tough. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh, that was brutal. You're gonna take 10 seconds. You're gonna push halfway. 10 seconds, halfway. 10 seconds, halfway. 10 seconds, halfway. Now, if you don't need the 10 seconds, cool. Then I'm just giving you too much rest and that's fine. You can take five seconds. My whole point is don't gash yourself out. It's only station number two. Don't be a hero and think you gotta just push unbroken for four laps. If you've trained for it and you can handle it, don't let me stop you. But I've seen so many guys try it and they come out of there and they can barely walk to go get water. And the next thing you know, all that time they thought they made is completely gone because they didn't take tiny little breaks. They keep their energy system in check. So the sled push can be a killer, manage it properly. Now I'm not gonna give you all the tips on sled pull because there's many variations you can utilize to pull the sled. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there that you can find on the sled pull. But the one tip I will give you is after the sled pull, which is station number three, jog, take some water. Okay, we wanna stay hydrated. At this point, you're three runs in, you're three stations in. So your body is losing electrolytes, it's losing hydration. So take some water after the sled pull. Tip number 18 is all about burpees. Burpees is, in my opinion, my least favorite station. So a lot of people try to go in and just blast out fast burpees. My suggestion is to go smooth, all right? So you want to do your best. This is why we practice, obviously. You wanna do your best to be smooth, not necessarily slow, but at a pace that allows you to kind of do it unbroken, right? So it's burpee, down, step up, keep going at a pace that you can keep your breathing under control. We don't wanna rush, burpee, 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 and then go, oh my God, I tapped out. And then I'm just standing there waiting like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and they're like, okay, I'm gonna keep going. And then next thing you know, you took you know four 20 second breaks. If you can just do the whole thing without stopping at a slightly slower pace that allows you to control your breathing, you're gonna be in great shape coming out of the burpees. You're gonna surpass, I guarantee, like 90% of people. All right, and obviously it's not just about beating other people, but it's about being proud of your race and honestly keeping your heart rate under control. The burpee coming off of two back-to-back -back sled stations is one that can really just destroy people's race. So don't go into it thinking I gotta blast through this as fast as possible. Go into it going, I wanna be as smooth as possible, right? Like nice, slow and steady, even if it looks or feels slow, if you're not stopping, trust me, you are way ahead of the game. So practice this in your training, smooth, is fast when it comes to burpees. We're almost done with these 20 tips. I hope this is helping you. Number 19 is at the row machine, which is halfway through your race. It's a smart idea to take some fuel. So you could pack uh, a, a gel pack in your shorts or whatever you're wearing for the race. Um, typically, most racing shorts allow for like a little packet, but I suggest taking some fuel. If this is your first high rocks and you've never actually completed a whole one before, it's important to take some fuel to keep your body primed and ready to go. So a gel pack, no caffeine is necessary, but something with some carbs, some salt, and some water at the row is a good idea. You're halfway through. The last thing you want is to run into crazy cramps in the back half. Do your best to stay fueled and hydrated by taking some fuel on the row. When you're sitting there rowing, it's easy just to take a quick gel pack without breaking up your station. So that's the time I suggest to fuel up halfway through the race. Now we're at tip number 20, which is all about wall balls. But I just wanna say this as we wrap up this video. So between the rower and the wall balls, there's obviously plenty of stations. There's the farmer's carry, there's the lunge. Uh, what else am I missing? So there actually, no, there isn't, there's only two. So you have the rower, which is station number five, and then you go into the farmer's carry, then you have the lunges, and then you finish with wall balls. So the race really starts after the row machine. Farmer's carry, blast through it, right? And then go do lunges, which is arguably one of the harder ones because your legs are shot, you're tired, you're mentally just gonna have to push through that one. Remember to breathe, but then the wall ball. So you get to the wall balls, you got a hundred of these things, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm beat, I'm tired, I just wanna get to that finish line. I got a hundred wall balls. Well, it's the simple strategy of just breaking it up. So the way I do it is I knock out as many as I can to start. So I go unbroken, typically I get about 40 to 50. Then in my head, I'm like, okay, 20, I can knock out 20. 10, I can knock out 10, I can do another 10. Before you know it, I'm like, I'm done, right? Because I just break up these large amounts into smaller bite size amounts. 
take a quick 10 second rest in between and then break them out into these small little chunks so that you're not trying to bang out unbroken. And then you go, oh, I'm done. And you rest a minute, then you rest a minute again. And then your time just starts to deteriorate. So break up your wall balls, even ahead of time, know what you're going to do. Like I'm going to go into it. I'm going to knock out 25. I'm going to do another 25. Then I'm going to do 15, whatever it is for you, practice it, set it ahead of time, then go execute. And I promise when you cross that finish line, you're gonna have a smile on your face because you just had the best race of your life and arguably a really well put together race based off your experience level. So your next step is to go watch my beginners high rocks tips video. This one has gotten a lot of good feedback. This will give you more insight into how to set up an entire high rocks plan. I have other high rocks videos on the channel. So go explore, go dig in. I hope this one helped. If it did, let me know in the comments. And I hope to see you out on a High Rocks event in the very near future. If you see me, make sure you say what's up. Life moves fast. Make it count. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.